This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing you a brand new company, brand new guest, and I'll tell you what, they hit my radar about three or four months ago, and I think they're going to do big things in the last quarter of 2018. They're going to explode in 2019. I always like to get ahead of the curve line. We're talking no other than Maple Leaf Green World, Inc. They trade on the OTCQB, ticker symbol MGWFF. And with us today is the CEO of that company, Raymond Lai. Raymond, welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric. You know, give my listeners a little bit about statement of who you guys are and what you do out there in Canada and Nevada and soon to be California. Sure. Yeah, we are a public company. Uh, Eric say that we train in, uh, M, uh, sorry, OTCQB under the symbol MGWFF. And we also train in uh, TSX Venture too under the symbol MGW. And the company we started in 2006 is we start with the operating a large greenhouse, about 110,000 square feet in northern China, to provide the government, China government, with uh, small seedlings, you know, small trees, as part of the efforts to fight desertification. And then when the China government cut down their budgets in 2013, and then forcing all the seedling supplier to reduce the price. And it becomes uh, really tough for us to stay competitive in, in China. So at the same time that, you know, like Canada start legalizing, you know, medical marijuana. Right. So we decided to close the operation in China and move the capital back to here. And then we start to apply for our cultivation China. Uh, at that time, it's called MMPR. Why right now it's called ACMPR. So... Also, at that time that we're waiting for this uh, license from Health Canada, we have made a really in-depth analysis of the whole cannabis you know, market in North America. And we felt that you know, Canada market is a little bit too small. You know? And the U.S. side, of course, they have a bigger market and they have a longer history of marijuana. So... At that time that we decided that we should also start up uh, California projects and allow the projects. Now, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because you, I want to talk about you guys purchasing the uh, BioNua uh, Innovations in, in Henderson. Right. Uh, can you bring us up to speed on, on that? Yeah, yeah. So that's the uh, one of the projects in Nevada. We bought this license, cultivation license from uh, BioNua, a uh, private company. And the license is about 33,500 square feet facility in Henderson. Wow. Which is about a 10 minute drive from uh, Las Vegas. Yes, I, I was okay. just there over the weekend. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Okay, I hope you have a good time. Anyway. <laughs> so, and we, after we bought the license, then we started to transfer over, you know, the ownership of the license to us. And at the same time, we also bought a piece of land in Henderson in the industrial area, about four acres of land. So we're going to build uh, that facility, you know, in this piece of land. And first phase we are doing right now is about 20,000 square feet. And we're using this uh, new technology for like uh, using magnesium oxide panel, you know, for the outside structure. Absolutely. And not, not only it cut down the, you know, the, contamination or humidity, but also it shortened the construction time by 80%. So we expect to finish the facility by summer this year. I was uh, I was reading one of your press releases, and you guys are in the process of construction also in Tuckway, British uh, Columbia facility, and I, I believe that you hired Rethinking Construction. Where are we at in the process of that? Yeah, okay, that facility is uh, the one that we used to apply for the MMPR or ACMPR, you know, cultivation license from Health Canada. Okay. And we we need this land from uh, one of the greenhouse facility over there, which is partly owned by one of the directors. So we we need thirty thousand square feet, uh, sorry, thirty acres 
of land from them, and we have option to buy that out in one year. Okay, and on the land we build a first phase the operate, uh, facility about thirty thousand square feet, and we have the permit to build from Health Canada. So once we build finished it, we will, we will have a cultivation license granted by the Health Canada. Then we can start cultivating the first and second crops at the same time. And then Health Canada will come to do the inspection, make sure there's no contaminations and nothing as clean as possible. Then we will get a sales license. Like, okay. and, so, and that facility is using the same thing. Yes. We use this uh, magnesium oxide, you know, to, to build. And we expect to finish it by early summer, too, this year. Yeah. My guest today is Raymond Lai. He's the CEO of Maple Leaf Green World. They trade on the OTCQB, ticker symbol MGWFF. What distinguishes you guys from all the other marijuana producers? Um, let me put it this way. You know, first of all, we have been doing greenhouse operations for a long time. So... We, I would say that we have long time experience and history of using organic methodologies to grow the plants. Okay, that's one of our, uh, our strengths. And secondly, is that also our key personnel that have extensive horticultural and cannabis cultivation experience. Uh, and the thirdly, our project locality are strategically located in three key areas in Northern uh, America, namely BC, California, and Nevada. So you're kind of forming a so-called golden triangle of North America, okay? And then also that, you know, our short-term goal or immediate goal is provide a value and return to the shareholder by making the company viable and profitable. Absolutely. Which I think you guys probably know that, you know, not that many, or I don't think the majority of the MJ companies are making money now, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. And also our long-term goal is not just focus in North America. We want to expand our operation, you know, to export, to export cannabis oil to overseas countries especially in Asia markets, for medical and health supplement purpose. Well, that kind of brings me to my next question. you got three projects I think you're kind of working on, the British Columbia project, the Henderson, Nevada project, and the California. My question to you, Raymond, is that how many cultivation licenses do you have in each one of those markets, and how many do you hope to have here in the near future? Okay, right now we only have one in Henderson. Okay. That we bought it, so we own it. But in BC, we expect to have one after we finish the facility. And what's okay. that timeline? So and what's that timeline? That will be in early summertime. Okay. Early summertime. Okay. And then after we grow the first crops, then we get a sales license too. Okay. So we will have three licenses, I would say, that within these few months. Now in California, we also bought uh, 20 acres of land with two greenhouses on it in uh, Riverside, California. Right. But we're waiting for the county to organize a public role, public vote on, you know, legalizing, you know, marijuana Absolutely. for recreational purpose. Right. So while we're waiting for that, you know, we're also looking for two pieces of land right now, one in Southern California, one in Northern California, for the county that they already, they already legalized you know, the medical medical and recreational marijuana. Absolutely. So in the short term that we will, like, you know, using the land to develop the facility and also apply for a license. So I expect that will be done sometime later part in in this year too. Raymond, so go ahead. I hope to, sorry, I hope to have, like, you know, including the California, we will have uh, at least four, you know, licenses. Raymond, in closing here, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to touch upon that you would like to illustrate to the listeners out there? Sure. I think uh, one other thing is that I want to bring it out to people is that, like, uh, right now we only have about 150 million share outstanding as a public company. Yep. Compared to all the other licensed producers, it's pretty small. 
most of them have uh, 200, 300 million. So we only have 150 million, and it's trading around like one dollar Canadian, about uh, what's 70 cents you know, U.S. So we have a lot of room to grow for us for stock value once we get a license. Well, I want my listeners to take a look at Maple Leaf Green World. I think they're undervalued here around 65 cents to 70 cents. They trade on the OTCQB, ticker symbol MGWFF, and they also trade on the TSX Venture, I believe, MGW. Raymond, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Hopefully you'll come back in 40 or 50 days and give us an update. Sure. Thanks a lot, Eric, to invite me on this show. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.